So I'm here with Kate Northrup, and I'm very excited because this month in the Sati community, we're talking about being the master of your mouth and that when we want our circumstances to change, we have to really start changing the script that we have inside our head and how we use our words. And so I thought this would be a great opportunity to talk about Kate's new book, Money, A Love Story, which I was just telling Kate earlier that it has really helped me to just sit down and focus in this area because it's an area that I haven't been focusing on. So tell us a little bit about this book, Kate, and why you really wanted to write it. Mm. So, I mean, the book is really um, taking a more spiritual approach to money, and but also including practical exercises and I've actually never found any for other personal finance books that bring in both the emotional and spiritual piece and the practical piece together usually it's and you know a lot of the personal finance world focuses on okay well you need an emergency fund and you need three months of your living expenses and you need an investment account and you need all these different things and it's very practical and it's very nuts and bolts but the thing is money is such a deeply emotional topic and if we don't bring in the emotional piece and how we feel about it we actually won't make the changes. And, you know, like you said, it's an area you haven't approached before very much. And that's really common. It was an area in my own life that I struggled with a lot. And I'm still on that growth. You know, it's still a journey for me. But um, I got myself into a lot of debt after college. And I was living in New York. And I just was kept every month spending more than I made, spending more than I made, spending more than I made. And I was successful in business, but I still was spending more than I made. So it didn't matter how much I made, I still was spending more. So I wasn't able to really like get out of that um, constant struggle. And so it wasn't until I, I connected money with my own self-value. And I realized that my overspending was directly related to a lack of self-worth. And it was kind of like a way I was manifesting, keeping myself small, mm. my constant overspending and my lack of financial consciousness. And when I noticed that and when I was able to turn it around, that's when everything shifted and I actually began to take all those action steps that I've been reading about in the personal finance books that I know, knew I should be taking, mm -hmm. but I wasn't doing it because I hadn't done that emotional work beforehand. So the book is really gives you the emotional pieces first to kind of dig into your money story, change the script going on, change what you're saying about money, and then get into the practical aspects of, okay, okay what accounts do I need and yeah. all of that stuff. Hang That's on. such yeah. a good point. It's a, like, and it's the same like for everything. We know what to eat. We know we need to exercise, but there's those emotional blocks. And what do you think, like for me, as I was getting started in this area, and as you know, I have three little ones. And so really the the conversation of money is much more important to me now. It's It really takes on a whole nother level. When before it was just like, oh, I have enough money to run my business. I have enough money to play. I have enough. So I didn't have that same kind of passion for like, okay, now we're raising a family. This is serious. I need to like take yeah. myself seriously, take my work seriously, because it's not just about me anymore. And I have to deal with this conversation of valuing my work. So what do you think is that first step? Because even though we know that, what do you think is the first step that has us, or maybe a better question is, what do you think is the first step to take from that place where you know you need to start looking at your finances, you know you need to start valuing your work more, but what do you think is that first action to take that gives you that link, that bridge? Well, when I was in that place myself, what I did, putting really like I wasn't even opening my credit card statements, I was putting them in a drawer. So I was in a void, and but I knew I needed to get out of the void. <laughs> so yeah. what I did is I started just every morning checking my bank account balance and so I know um, from my from my different personal growth work and stuff that what we put our attention on grows and so if we want an area in our life to flourish we have to pay attention to it we can't just ignore it and so I knew I needed to pay attention to my money but I was scared hmm. you know because I felt bad about myself and there was a lot of judgment around my spending and all this stuff and so what I did is I thought okay I can just check in with my bank account balance every morning and take a moment in gratitude for the abundance that I have in my life. Mm. And, and some days that bank account balance was negative. 
because I was going into overdraft. So it wasn't that it was like, oh, I'm going to sit here and be grateful for my hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> you know, I was like, sometimes I was just sitting and being grateful for $36, you know, or whatever it was. And then, but the, the number began to grow as I said, thank you for being here with me. You know, thank you for, for the roof over my head and for my friends and for my health, because abundance is, is a really a holistic experience. It's not just the amount in your bank account, but checking in daily and putting that attention so you can have a link so that when you're paying attention to your money, you're almost beginning to train yourself like Pavlov's dog mm -hmm. to get into that space of gratitude mm -hmm. and expansion. So that's a great step to start with because it, it'll take you 30 seconds every day. Right. I actually think that's fantastic because those of us that have this kind of issue around money, it's like, just looking at what you really have, like just getting present to what's really going on. I used to do that too, put the things in the drawer and just in this last, like really from reading your book and by just, even opening the book was challenging, right? Just opening the book was challenging to be like, okay, it's time to commit to this. But one of the reasons I loved it is because it does have that spiritual piece. And it does help you make that link, that that connection that actually gives you the strength to look, to be present, and to move forward. And it also makes you feel like, wow, this is really possible. I can do this. Right. I exactly. can do this. Yeah, and it is meant to be um, a friendly book. A lot of the personal finance world has shame and um a lot of shame, actually, a lot of finger wagging and like, you've been wrong and you've been bad, mm. you know, and like, oh, if you haven't started a retirement fund by the time you're 40, there's something wrong with you or something. And it's like, maybe you just didn't have the right information or you were scared or whatever. And it's okay. Mm -hmm. Like, it's always a good time to start. It doesn't, right. doesn't matter. You know, um, I, one of my favorite examples is Louise Hay, um, who wrote, you can heal your life. And she founded Hay House in her sixties. You know, she started the biggest piece of her career and financial life in her. It's so cool. It's never too late. It's so cool. It is never too late. And I'm going to end there And I, because I want people to buy this book. I really do. In my, in, in my community right now, we're doing abundance and we're doing Master of Your Mouth. And this is so in alignment with everything that I teach. And the thing for me is I really am taking this on as my area right now because I know that as the person who's like the leader of the Sati community, it's important that I have a higher, better relationship in this area so that it becomes the foundation for everybody else to flourish. So I'm taking this on and I really invite everybody to take it on because it really matters. It really matters. And I'm so glad you wrote this book. And I'm so glad that you've taken the time out of your super busy day to share with us all of your ideas. And I hope this book for you brings you a ton of blessings, as I know it's going to bring for so many people. Thank you, Patricia. Where do you want people to find you and find this book? You can just find me at katenorthrup.com and I've got a great free quiz there that you can take and um, find out what your relationship with money says about you and some other great videos called Financial Freedom Friday. So come on over to katenorthrup.com. Awesome. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.